MJ12P41Q10. A student designs an electronic sensor to be used when the switch on to switch on the lamp when the light intensity is low. So when it's low, you want to on the lamp. Part of the circuit is already shown. Okay, looks pretty cool. I mean, standard circuit. State the name of the component labeled X on figure uh, 10.1. What's X? Where is X? X is right here. That one, when you see a resistor with these arrows pointing in, that's your LDR. Not long distance relationship, your light dependent resistor. LDR. So if you recognize a symbol, that's one mark for you. Okay. Wow, that is a very big red color. Okay, next part. On figure 10.1, draw the symbols for two resistors to complete the sensing part. So you want to draw two resistors for the sensing device and a relay for the processing unit. So you are basically you are drawing the sensing and you are drawing the output. Relay is talking about the output. So in the previous section, we talked about how you have the sensing, processing and output. All three need to put together. So you need to draw sensing device and output. Okay, let's go and see what we can do here. There's some blanks here and there. First thing you see, what happened to this leg? It's not connected to a sensing device. So we need something here. Okay, this is how we can plan this. The first leg, V+, plus, this is the non-inverting input, already has a connection. So this V+, plus is going to be the one that is changing, depending on the light condition. Why is it changing? Because this resistance here is changing. And of course, even the thermostat, uh, thermostat variable resistor, you can also change. Ma. So uh, this one is the changing leg, which means the other leg, you should probably want to keep it at a stable for same potential. So this is the inverting input. You want to keep this at a constant potential. So how to design it? Eh? Uh, what you can do is you draw another resistor here and go down to here and down to ground. And this one, we want to keep constant. Okay, this resistor constant and we connect it like that. Ah, this one we connect a junction. This way, V minus will be the same, no matter how you change the X on the left side, the LDR. So this is the first part. If you put two resistors in series, uh, that one already one mark. If you join the op M input to the junction between here, ah, this one is an A one mark. Wow, draw like that can get one one. Ah. Yeah, Correct. Last one. Uh, what's the other thing they want us to draw? A relay to complete the circuit for the processing unit. Why do we need a relay in the first place? Take a careful look at this output device. This is a really high voltage supply here. And we don't want to connect this high voltage to our relay like this. Uh, that would be a bit dangerous because our op amp is going to burn. Our op cannot take such a big voltage. So we need a separate circuit. So what usually happens is when you have a high voltage circuit, you only connect a switch here, looks something like this. But we need something to move this switch. What is it called? It's called a relay. So to draw the relay, I'm going to do something like this. I'll just put a box here to represent the relay coil. Okay, Actually, this whole thing is inside a relay. Lah. But here is the relay coil. The actual relay item, the component, is the whole area here this whole gray box consider a relay it links it links together both circuits but there's no actual connection it's just a magnet inside the relay coil that will repel or attract oh actually wrong side huh? that will attract this switch and it will make contact so the relay coil will attract this switch and when it's attract ready ah then it will make contact that's all it is okay so this one all inside the relay switch now this one is two marks, so one mark comes from you knowing where to put the relay coil on outside of the output side of the op M, and also the switch on the other side, which is A1. Now these are the two marks drawing question. If you see something got three marks or three marks means you might need to draw the extra safety circuit as well. So I'll just draw extra. This is a safety circuit to protect the relay. Because the inside relay coil is an inductor. Got coil eh? 
means got anytime there's a change in flux, it does not like the change. So sometimes you can put an extra safety diode here so that uh, when you have, originally you have current flowing this way, okay, then when the relay deactivate ready, it still wants current that way, but instead of sending it to op amp, sends it back down into ground through the diode. So this one is called a safety loop. Lah. You can go check out the theory video if you haven't seen that one yet, right before this one. So that's the first part, okay? So we have the sensing, processing, and output. Three parts in one. Wow, wow drawing, man. Okay, must know how to draw. Lah. <clears throat> Say the purpose of the relay. Oh, we kind of talk about this. This is a super high voltage. We want to protect this part of the circuit. So we are separating the circuit, but they are linked together by a magnetic field. Attract this metal, ting, touch, close the switch. So we're going to talk about that as the purpose of the relay. So let's scroll all the way down. So we can say the purpose of this relay is to switch on and off your supply. So you can say to switch on or off your main supply. For who? Ah? Check your circuit. For lamp. Using the processing unit, which is the op amp, so using a small or low voltage output. Okay. In other words, you are isolating the op amp from the mains. Okay, so this is just a one mark. Lah. If I want to scroll back up there for you to see, okay. Remember, it's two separate circuits linked together by a relay. So high voltage is this side. It's not going to go to op amp. You're isolating both circuits. The lower voltage side is this side. 5 volts can activate already. So you don't need like 240 volts. Quite dangerous for op amp. It's going to burn it. So that's why we use a relay instead of just a normal switch. Okay, back here. Suggest why the diode is connected to the output of the op amp in the direction shown. So I'm going to redraw it down here so we don't have to keep scrolling up and down, up and down. There's our op amp setup and the diode that they draw in the circuit is a very interesting one. It's pointed this way, whoa. like this. Why? Ah? Why is it connected in such a way? Well, think about it this way. When will the, the, the relay switch on? If current is trying to flow like this, can flow? Ah? Will the diode allow it to flow? Will it? Actually, no. Diode will not activate. So the only way you have current flowing is if it is flowing in this direction. When will that happen? It will only happen if this ground zero volt, because ground is zero volt, ma, okay? Only happen if this is the relatively higher potential. So the only way to have that is an output of your op amp of negative five. Oh, then only you can flow from 0 to negative 5. Current will flow from high to low. That's all we need to know. Okay, So that's the purpose of that diode. Your relay will only switch on if you have negative 5 volt output on your processing unit, which is the op amp. So how do we write that? Ah? We say look, the relay will only switch on for one output, only negative 5. Okay, one output, which is when the output voltage, eh, what am I writing? The output voltage is lower than ground, so negative 4, negative 5. So you can either say negative 5 volt or when the output voltage is negative, it's either positive or negative, ma. some negative number. Okay, this one is two marks. If you say Relay will only switch on for one output. That's one mark. And you talk about whether it's negative, only a switch on. That's another mark. Now you might be wondering, why only one output leh? Because you see, oh, we have a problem. If you only draw this, and you didn't put any diode, you put a relay here. Relay coil to ground. When your output is positive 5, where will current flow? Ah, ah ground is here. Zero volt. Okay, think look very carefully. Ah. If your output is 5 volts, where will current flow? Flow like that. Oh, can flow through relay? Ah. Can. So relay will turn on. Oh, okay. If your output is negative 5, 
negative 5. Well, current flow? Yes, also will flow this way. Lo. Okay. So if you didn't put a diode, current can flow both ways, so your relay will turn on no matter what the output is. But we don't want that. We only want it to on when the output is negative 5. Not positive 5, negative 5 only. That's why you must say only one output and we only want the negative, not both. So that's why we put a diode there. Though. Okay. That's how we can think of this whole logic system. And I think that's it for this question. Okay, so this is a nice short and sweet one to really understand what is happening when you have a diode and how to connect the sensing part and the processing and output part. But it's a big role. Okay, so you can check out the mask scheme for how you get marks for drawing these things. Uh, I kind of mentioned it already, but do check it out and get used to drawing circuits, design them, because you will be needing that skill. Last thing to add on. I didn't draw the circuit for when it's positive 5, right? Did I? No, I did not. Okay, so let's see. If it's positive 5 for our current setup. Forgot to draw, okay. And it's still the same diode arrangement. Well, current flow. Current want to flow from high to low. So cannot current 0 because the diode is not going to allow that. Diode is not conducting. It's reverse bias. So also known as reversed bias. You cannot have current like this. It's opposite. So cannot. No current. Not going to draw any arrows. Okay. So just keep that in mind how to draw diodes. Think from high to low potential. Okay. So that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one. We look at more output devices to be connected to the circuit.